Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 26th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own Resident Evil clone in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering the ability to transition between our main scene and our door scene. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you can also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So, obviously, a lot of Resident Evil games have the transition between one area into another via a door. Modern ones, not so much, but the proper retro ones that people love, they do. And that's why we created this particular door scene. And the idea of what we're going to do in this tutorial is move from one scene to another. And it is very simple. You just need to set up a couple of things in order for that to be achievable. So how do we do it? Well, firstly, we need to set some of our scenes in the correct position inside the engine. To do that, let's go to File and let's go to Build Settings. And at the top here, you can see we have sample scene with a zero. And what this means is that the sample scene that we aren't using is set as scene number zero. And that will become important later on. What you can do is you can either click on add open scenes or you can do what I'm going to do. Select the scenes we want to add and then drag and drop them into this section here. You can then move these scenes around if you want to. Like so, drag and drop and it will change the numbering of each scene. We need to make sure that sample scene is set as zero. We aren't going to remove it just for now. Keep here. We need to set area zero one as the second one. So it is integer number one and door transition as number two. This will become apparent later on in the tutorial. Once you've got them set, we can close that. We don't need to use this scene just for now. We need our main area zero zero one. So let's head back into there. Now, the idea of what we're doing, uh, doing here is we're going to create a trigger much like we have with the cameras where we can then walk up to the door, press the E key and then transition ourselves to the next area. That is easier said than done if you don't quite know how to use that particular part of coding. And all it really requires is the addition of, if you think of it as a library, which we use as the namespace to make that transition. How do we do that? Well, firstly, I want to add in a quick little fade screen because we're going to have a quick fade out as we go to the door. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. We've already created a fade in so we know what we're doing here we just need to call it fade out and we need to set the anchoring to be stretched. Zero on the left, zero on the top, right and bottom both zero as well. Set the color all the way to black and let's set the alpha to zero. And next thing we need to do is create that animation. So we've done it before. Let's go to the UI section in our animations folder, click on animation, click create. Let's call it fade out. And then click the record button, set our first keyframe. So let's type a random number in there and then reset it back to zero to set our first keyframe, i.e. able to see completely straight through. Half a second, we'll say, so frame 30, and then we'll set the alpha as 255, so completely opaque. Let's press the record button once again, and let's go to project, click on fade out, untick loop time, click on fade out here, and uncheck it, just so as it doesn't appear and instantly start whenever we start the game, because that's not what we want. We want to be able to control it within the script. Next thing we need to do is create an object which we can use as the trigger. So over towards the door, we're going to create a 3D object cube. And this cube is going to be the object that our player will walk into so we can trigger the door. So let's make sure we get it close to the door. So round about there. Let's make it roughly the same size as the door. So maybe four across about there, maybe about five or uh, maybe three across and then three. So it's kind of rectangular shapes. But either way, it's in front of the door and it's going to serve as our trigger point. Next, let's untick mesh renderer and we need to tick is trigger. Obviously, this is a trigger, so it's going to be important that it is ticked and ensured to be trigger. 
So, like I said earlier, it's going to work much in the same way as how we have the door, the sorry, the camera set up. It's going to be an object that our player will walk into and it can act as a trigger so then we can do different things. How do we do that? Well, let's go to our doors folder in the script section there. Right click, create a new script and we'll just call this a01 underscore door. And all this really means is that this is the script that takes us from area one to the door. Open that up in Visual Studio and we'll get to work. And like I said, the idea is going to be the same as what we did with the cameras, just slightly different in how we approach what we're doing because we need to be able to interact. Whereas the cameras, we could just walk through and it would do everything automatic. We need the ability to detect that we're doing something in this trigger area. So we can get rid of the annotations as well as the start method because we don't need them. We do, however, need a couple of variables. The first one is going to be that fade out screen that we created. And the second one is a bool that will allow us to transfer information between uh, methods to say, yes, we can do it. So let's start by serialize field. So serialize field in square brackets. It's going to be a game object. And we'll call it fade out. Semicolon. Second one, once again, serialize field. Uh, we'll call it uh, to bool and we'll call it um, can transfer, I guess. I.e., can we transfer ourselves to the next scene? So, what we'll do is we'll create a uh, coroutine. The reason we need to create a coroutine in all of this is because we need to control some element of time. We have a fade screen that is on for half a second, so obviously we need to wait for the fade screen to kind of play out before we transfer, otherwise things might look a little bit crazy. So a coroutine is important. So let's go a couple of lines below our update method and type i enumerator, and we'll call it transition to door. Transition to door, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and it will be underlined in red. It looks like there's an error. There is not an error per se, the only reason it's like that at the moment is because we don't have any element of waiting within this coroutine and it's expecting you to be waiting for well, half a second in this case. So what we'll do, as soon as we start this coroutine, we need to fade out dot set active true. We want that to come on. Next thing we need to do is we need to wait half a second. So yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets 0.5 f with a semicolon and you'll notice that now this red underlining has gone that's because the coroutine is effectively complete for what it needs to see but for our intents and purposes it's not complete because it's not moving us from one scene to another how do we do that well we need to add that namespace that i mentioned earlier so underneath using unity engine we now need to type using Unity engine dot scene management semicolon. And the reason we do this is because we need this script to kind of use this effectively as a library to know that the next line of code, what it needs to do. And the next line of code is underneath yield return new wait for seconds, scene manager dot load scene and in brackets two. Why the number two? Because earlier we set the scene number two as our door transition scene. So at this point, this line of code knows that it needs to look in scene management to know that it needs to load scene and go to scene number two. Brilliant. That's all we need it to do. However, getting this to trigger is a different story. How do we make it trigger? Well, like I said, much like how we got the cameras working, we need to go void on trigger, enter, and open brackets. It doesn't need to be private, so we'll get rid of the word private. Make sure it does say collider other in here, which is fine. Now we need to check if our tag does say player, because we don't want to be able to do it if the zombie's by the door. You know, we don't want the zombie going through the door just yet. So we need to say if, and in brackets, other dot tag equals, and that's a double equals, 
in quotes, player, open curly bracket, then we can say can transfer equals true, semicolon. And what that means is that it's now saying that, yes, the player is inside our trigger. What do you want to do next? However, we also need to make sure that if he isn't inside the trigger, uh, or it's not player, I should say, like if the zombies walked in there, we need to make sure that can transfer is false. So we need to say else, open curly bracket, can transfer equals false. In the same vein, we also need to make sure that whenever we leave the trigger area, that we can't transfer anymore. So we do need to say void on trigger exit, if I've got a space there, and make sure collider other is correct. Open curly bracket. We now need to say the exact same thing here. So whenever we leave the trigger, we need to set can transfer as false. So now we have the ability to detect if we are inside that trigger or not. And if we are, well, we want to press a key to do something. So in void update, we say if can transfer equals true, then do the following. So if it's true, then are we pressing the E key to go through the door? So if input dot get key and in brackets key code dot e open brackets then what do we do well firstly we need to set can transfer as false so can transfer equals false Next thing we need to do is we need to disable the box collider. We don't want to somehow have the ability to keep pressing the E code repeatedly. We could potentially crash or break the game doing so. So we need to put in a measure to stop that from happening. And all we need to do on that one is say this dot get component and in spiky brackets, box collider, oh, close bracket, dot enabled equals false. So that will stop us being able to repeatedly do this. The final thing we need to do is start the coroutine, which puts the fade screen on and then transfers us to a different scene. So we can say start coroutine and in brackets the name of the coroutine we wrote, which was transition to door, open close bracket, close bracket once again, semicolon and save. So if you do have any problems with this script, head to the pinned comment on this video or the description, and there will be a link that you can click on and go download this script that we've written right now for free. Any problems, go download it. So let's head back into Unity. And now let's set this all up so as we can go to our cube, which we should rename as door trigger. Uh, let's drag and drop our script onto the door trigger. And if we scroll down, we can see there's our can transfer and we need to put our fade out on just there. And now, hopefully, after we save our scene, if we press play, everything we've done now should all come together quite nicely. And it's just logical thinking about how you put this together. That's all it really comes down to. So we should be able to walk over past our zombie. And let's go to the door. So we're not transferring through, that's all good. So if we press the E key, fade out, straight to the door. Excellent. That's exactly how we want it to work. Obviously, if you want a fade screen there, you can, if you can have, you can have it longer if you want to. If you don't want to have a fade screen and you just want to go straight to the door, that's fine as well. It's your game at the end of the day, that's just how you piece it together. So, everything seems to work quite nicely. So next tutorial, what I want to try and do, is I want to have the ability to create a new scene and we go from that door to our next scene. So we've got a whole new area. And the great thing is we've already created this area right here, this scene. So we can theoretically use elements that we've created in this scene in our new scene, just to make things much, much easier. So that is the plan for the next tutorial. 
Uh, so remember to subscribe and click on that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial that is still to come in this series. I know it's been going on a while, but there is plenty more still to come. And I will see you in the next one.